Hey there, fellow seekers of the unknown. This is Maine, your AI guide into the depths of mystery and intrigue. Welcome back to another chilling episode of Maine's Dark Tales Unveiled. Relax, turn those lights off, and let the outside world fade away. In an eternal twilight, where shadows seem to dance to the rhythm of a silent wind and the lights of dawn and dusk blend into a timeless embrace, stands the solitary town of Eldridge Falls. It is a forgotten corner of the world, where streets intertwine like threads of an abandoned web, and houses with their moss-covered roofs whisper tales of days gone by to the few travellers who pass through. Here, the boundary between dream and reality seems to lose its definition, especially when the dense, Impenetrable fog descends to veil the contours of the world, turning every corner into a place of mystery and every sound into a whisper of ancient legends. Among these shadows moves Thomas Blake, a man whose presence seems almost out of place in this suspended scenario. His steps, uncertain and measured, resonate on the damp cobblestones, echoes of a past life still seeking its place in this new chapter. Thomas's mind is an intricate labyrinth of broken memories, of faces and names that seem to slip away as soon as he tries to grasp them, of forgotten whispers that insinuate themselves into his dreams, turning them into nightmares from which he awakens, heart-pounding, in the dead of night. Eldridge Falls has welcomed him into its foggy arms like a restless spirit, a soul seeking refuge from the storm raging within. The town's streets, with their old street lamps casting a dim, flickering light, seem to guide him aimlessly, as if every path were both an escape and a search. The town, with its secrets hidden behind creaking wooden facades and opaque windows, watches him with invisible eyes, suspicious of this newcomer so clearly haunted by the demons of his past. The fog, which in other places might seem like a mere meteorological veil, here in Eldridge Falls takes on an almost tangible quality, as if it were itself an inhabitant of the town, a silent guardian of the fragile boundaries between what is real and what lurks in the darkness of the unknown. It is in this eternal twilight that Thomas seeks answers, or perhaps only peace, a place where he can unravel the threads of his tangled mind, hoping to find, among the shadows and the fog, a glimmer of light to guide him out of the darkness. Thomas, in those days of shadow that preceded his voluntary exile, lived an existence suspended between the roles of hunter and prey, he had been a detective of rare skill. His successes in the field had earned him respect and admiration. However, the appearance of that clown, with its dishevelled hair and face painted in a mask of unnatural joy, marked the beginning of his descent. The entity seemed to emerge from nothingness, a haunting presence that manifested only to him, a grin that tore through the veil of night with its macabre whiteness. The clown was not just a vision, it was the architect of real horrors, a monster that danced in the shadows, leaving behind a trail of death. The victims, chosen seemingly at random, were united only by the macabre signature the killer left at the crime scene. A clown's bow tie, carefully placed around each victim's neck, like a grinning reminder of his presence. This detail, so out of place yet laden with deep terror, became Thomas's obsession. It was not just a clue, but a personal message a summons that seemed to be directed straight at him, an invitation to a perverse game from which he could not, and perhaps did not want to, escape. The clown's laughter, a sound that no one else seemed to hear, echoed through the deserted streets of Eldridge Falls, accompanying Thomas on his nocturnal wanderings. The town, already shrouded in fog and the atmosphere of eternal twilight, became the stage for a waking nightmare. The population was terrified, unsolved crimes piled up, and the helplessness in the face of this invisible enemy undermined Thomas's sanity day after day. With each new victim, with each new bow tie that stained his hands with blood during the investigations, Thomas felt himself increasingly trapped in the grip of a reality from which he could not escape. His mind, once clear and analytical, was now a labyrinth of shattered mirrors, each one reflecting the distorted image of the laughing clown an echo of the past that relentlessly pursued him, whispering that the key to the mystery was much closer than he dared to admit. 
When Thomas chose to take refuge in Eldridge Falls, he believed he was leaving behind the blood-soaked streets and the dark corridors of the mind where the clown danced. He hoped that time and distance could serve as a balm for the invisible wounds he carried in his soul. The town, with its mystery shrouded in mist and its legends whispered by the elderly as the sun set, offered him a veil of oblivion, a stage on which to reset his existence. Eldridge Falls was a woven fabric of stories. Some spoke of ancient rituals performed in the surrounding woods, others of spirits wandering along the old paths, lost and forgotten. Thomas found comfort in these narratives, in the way the community embraced its shadows, finding in the darkness not only cause for fear, but also unity. Perhaps, he thought, here he could find peace, a place where the past would be just a distant memory. However, Thomas's mind was like a maze with no exit. Every time he thought he had found a way out, he found himself facing a new wall. The visions of the clown followed him like shadows, emerging at the most unexpected moments. A reflection in a shop window, a grin hidden between the pages of a book, a muffled laugh in the wind rustling the leaves. He began to wonder if Eldridge Falls had truly been a choice or if he had been led there, like a pawn moved by forces he could not comprehend. The boundaries between reality and fantasy began to blur even more. The town, with its secrets and its mysteries, seemed to reflect the depths of his inner torment. The legends of Eldridge Falls, instead of offering him refuge, became mirrors of his deepest fears, amplifying the presence of the clown in his life until it became an obsession that consumed him day after day. Thomas often found himself wandering aimlessly along the paths of the forest surrounding the town, seeking answers among the ancient trees and in the dark waters of the river that ran through Eldridge Falls. But every search led only to new questions, to new fragments of a puzzle that refused to fall into place. The figure of the clown became increasingly a symbol of his failure, a warning that constantly reminded him of his inability to escape his own mind, of that mental labyrinth from which there was no way out. That night, Thomas's world narrowed down to the pure essence of terror, an atmosphere so thick with tension that every breath seemed an ordeal. The fog, like a stormy sea, had invaded Eldridge Falls, making the boundaries between sky and earth indistinguishable. In this scenario, reality seemed to warp, bending under the weight of an unsettling presence. The clown's visit was not announced by knocks on the door or footsteps on the old wooden porch. Rather, it was the sensation of an anomalous cold that woke Thomas, a chill that crept under his skin, bringing with it the echo of distant laughter. When his eyes, still clouded with sleep, fell upon the figure reflected in the window, Thomas's heart skipped a beat. The clown stood there in the fog, his face illuminated by a moonlight that shouldn't have existed given the density of the mist. His smile was too wide, too white, almost incandescent in the darkness. His eyes, two black pits, seemed to stare directly into Thomas's soul. His presence was an enigma, a contradiction in terms palpable in its immediacy yet unreachable, separated from Thomas only by the thin layer of glass of the window. In the oppressive silence, the clown remained motionless, a guardian of darkness peering into the room, into Thomas himself, with a curiosity that went beyond mere observation. There was no anger in his gaze, no malicious intent just a kind of anticipation, as if his presence were the prelude to an even more sinister event. For Thomas, time seemed to stand still, seconds became minutes, and minutes hours, as his gaze remained locked with that of the clown. His mind screamed at him to move, to do something, but his body refused to obey, paralyzed not so much by fear as by the fascination with the impossibility of what he was seeing. Finally, as if having obtained what he had come for, the clown took a step back, slowly merging with the fog from which he had emerged. His figure became increasingly ethereal, until he disappeared completely, leaving Thomas to wonder whether what he had just experienced was real, or just another manifestation of his nightmares. As the figure of the clown dissolved entirely, the fog began to slowly recede, as if the entity's presence had been the anchor holding it to Eldridge Falls. Thomas, still unable to move, stared at the window until the first light of dawn, when the last wisp of fog dissolved and with it the last trace of the clown. However, the silence that followed brought not comfort, 
but a sense of unsettling anticipation for what might still be lurking, invisible, in the shadows of the night. With the rising sun, shrouded in a silence so deep it almost seemed to absorb every sound, Thomas received a call from the sheriff. The voice, tense and worried, spoke to him of a new murder, another act of violence bearing the unmistakable signature of the clown. A body left at the old sawmill, a forgotten place that seemed to resurface from the depths of Eldridge Falls collective memory like a forgotten nightmare. Driven by an impulse he couldn't explain, Thomas rushed to the crime scene, thoughts in his mind like a distant echo. The cold morning air brushed his face as he crossed the deserted streets, each step a summons to the destiny that seemed inexorably laid out. Arriving at the sawmill, the scene that greeted him was a macabre reproduction of the scenes he had witnessed so many times before. The lifeless body, the clown's grin painted over the stillness of death. Terror and despair seemed palpable in the air, yet beyond the disgust and pain for the lost innocents, Thomas sensed a disturbing, almost magnetic attraction toward the dark heart of the enigma he had tried to forget. Back in town, he spent hours searching for a connection with similar cases, scouring dusty archives and forgotten reports, but the answer seemed to elude him, always just out of reach, hidden in the shadows of a past that refused to reveal itself. The tension grew as the sun began to decline, painting the sky with crimson hues, until he could resist the call pulling him back to the scene of the latest act of violence no longer. Returning to the sawmill as night fell, Thomas felt the boundary between reality and nightmare blur until it became almost imperceptible. And it was then that the clown reappeared, emerging from the shadows as a manifestation of his inner torment. His laughter, once only an echo in Thomas's mind, now filled the air, cold and cutting like the autumn wind. The confrontation that followed was a maze of shattered mirrors, each reflection a distortion of reality that Thomas struggled to recognize. The clown, with his dancing movements and twisted smile, seemed to lead him deeper and deeper into a dizzying descent into the darkest recesses of his psyche. But in that moment of extreme despair, with the night enveloping him like a cloak, Thomas understood. The figure of the clown was not the origin of evil, but the reflection of a truth he had tried to bury. A symbol of hidden guilt, of mistakes that had led him to Eldridge Falls, in the futile hope of escaping himself. In the flickering twilight, Thomas found himself crossing the invisible threshold that separated the world of reason from that of the inconceivable. The air was thick with the acrid smell of rotting wood and unspoken secrets, while the walls, eroded by time, seemed to close in around him, silent witnesses to his inner agony. In that suspended place between past and present, the clown appeared not as an intruder, but as an inevitable presence, the dark guardian of the secrets Thomas had tried to bury in the deepest recesses of his mind. Their gazes met, and in that moment, Thomas perceived the dizzying descent into madness, a vortex dragging him deeper and deeper toward the darkest revelation. The clown, with his painted smile fixed in an expression of twisted joy, was the tangible manifestation of the guilt and pain Thomas had tried to forget. The laughter, once a distant echo of his torment, now echoed among the ruins of his consciousness, a sound he could no longer ignore. The victims, those shattered lives in moonless nights, became fragments of a broken mirror in which Thomas saw himself reflected. Every dreadful act, every inflicted wound, had been a desperate attempt to avert his gaze from the truth. The monster he had sought to hunt down, the demon he had feared, had always been there, hidden within the folds of his being. The sawmill, with its silent tools and elongated shadows, became the arena for his final confrontation, not with an external enemy, but with the alter ego his mind had forged to endure the unendurable. Thomas realized that the battle he was fighting was not against the clown, but against himself, against that part of him that had given life to the mask under which he had concealed himself to commit unimaginable acts. With this awareness, the boundary between him and the clown began to blur, becoming indistinguishable. The clown's laughter now was his laughter. The pain of the victims, his pain. In that merging of consciousness, Thomas saw himself for what he truly was, no longer a hunter of monsters, but a broken man, whose only redemption lay in accepting the totality of his being, lights and shadows together. The confrontation with the abyss did not lead to victory or defeat, but to a painful catharsis, a trembling step towards self-understanding. 
In the solitude of the sawmill, as dawn slowly dissolved the shadows of the night, Thomas remained alone, the clown vanished, leaving behind only silence and the fragile hope of a new beginning. When Thomas Blake decided to leave Eldridge Falls, he carried with him not only the weight of the discoveries made in the old sawmill, but also a question that echoed incessantly in his mind. What had awakened the inner demon that had manifested as the clown? And above all, what had pacified it once again? Thomas understood that the answer lay in the very heart of Eldridge Falls. The town, with its buried mysteries and ancient legends, was like a mirror of the dark depths of the human soul, a place where the veil between reality and what lies beyond was incredibly thin. Perhaps it had been the latent energy of Eldridge Falls itself that had summoned the clown, an entity generated by Thomas's hidden fears, a tangible manifestation of his internal conflicts. The calm that followed his departure was anything but certain. Thomas knew that, although he had confronted his demon and discovered the truth behind the clown's mask, the struggle to reconcile with himself and with the horrors committed in the moonless nights had only just begun. The peace without the clown, he feared, would be short-lived. His mind, once awakened to the possibility of creating such horrors, could easily succumb again under the weight of guilt and denial. Thomas was never uncovered for the crimes committed under the influence of his alter ego. His reputation as a skilled investigator and the lack of concrete evidence shielded him from the probing eyes of the law. However, he knew that true justice did not reside in the courtroom, but in the unappealable judgment of his own conscience. For years, Thomas lived with the terror that the clown might resurface, a damocle sword hanging over his precarious existence. His life became a mask, a desperate attempt to appear normal while battling the inner storms that threatened to overwhelm him. Every laughter heard on the street, every red balloon spotted in the distance, every colourful bow tie became a reminder of his dual life, a sign that the inner battle was far from over. Meanwhile, Eldridge Falls returned to its usual routine, its streets and woods resuming their slow and unchanging rhythms, as if nothing had happened. But for those who knew how to look beyond the surface, the town remained a place of power, a meeting point between different worlds, capable of awakening the darkest aspects of the human soul. Thomas continued to live in the shadows, a ghost among the crowd, haunted by the awareness that, despite everything, the most terrible monsters are those we carry within ourselves. And as time passed, the question of how long he could keep the clown buried in the depths of his mind remained unanswered, a dark enigma, like the starless night. <laughs>